my friends, it's Sasha. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is time for the long-awaited annual pumpkin bong. Where did I put it? It's right here. I am so happy that... So in 2020, I made a pumpkin bong with a pumpkin that I grew. Last year, I unfortunately had a pumpkin vine, but no pumpkins actually grew in it. And this year, I grew another pumpkin. So of course, we had to turn this into a pumpkin bong. To be honest, I harvested this like probably close to two months ago. It doesn't feel soft but hopefully this works out. It also doesn't feel super firm, like as firm as pumpkins should be, but there's extras outside if I need to go grab another one. The cats have been loving this little floor setup, and by loving it, I mean annoying the hell out of me. They've been trying to climb underneath this like tablecloth. That's, this is their cat. Oh, that kind of makes sense though. Their cat food is underneath here. But they also just love burrowing into things. If you have a cat, you know. So they were like crawling underneath this little tablecloth and then trying to wrestle underneath there. But I think because I started setting up like over an hour ago, they're kind of desensitized to it now. So hopefully they don't bother us as much. I ended up grabbing my red skull bong. I have four of these. I have clear, red, and then the red is kind of like almost solid if you will and then I also have a green and purplish <laughs> and those ones are more see-through whoa what was that she just did her usual thing when she launched on the cat tower but it fell over it fell over yep holy shit <laughs> but I picked the red one just solely because of my pants and then I have this little empire glass mushroom bowl oh my god I have so many cool bowl pieces from them I'm gonna have to show you guys in a vlog in the near future but i'm gonna pack the skull bong so we can get a nice little hit in here right away i haven't smelled any flour today i've only had my my solventless pod which i think is animal mints okay let's take a quick hit and then we will get into this i will try to make this like as tutorially as i can that way anyone that wants to follow along and make their own pumpkin bong is easily able to but i guess the first thing you need is some weed and to take a hit before you start cheers I just realized I should have worn my Halloween merch. It's almost fully sold out. There's definitely like a good amount of small t-shirts for some reason. All the small crewnecks sold out. I think for crewnecks we only have large, extra large and 2XL. Look, she's trying to... Okay. I guess I'll just let her go under there. So crewnecks we seem to have the larger sizes, t-shirts we seem to have the smaller sizes, but I'll have my shop links down below if you would like to check it out. Take one more hit. So things that you are going to need, of course, some carving tools. You can just use like a kitchen knife. I'm sure it would work fine. But I feel like these ones that come in the carving kits, they're very, very like skinny. So these are gonna be easier for doing the like small holes that you need for the down stem and your mouthpiece. So um, they're like, what, three bucks from Walmart? I would say to pick up one of these. You are of course going to need a pumpkin. I recommend getting one. I think this is probably around like volleyball size. That's what I would say. You can definitely go bigger. You can go smaller, but you wanna make sure that your pumpkin is hollow. I believe they sell, I mean, there's obviously tons of different types of pumpkins, but a lot of people will accidentally get pie pumpkins and those ones are much thicker. You can't really cut into them. They don't have like the hollow aspect as like jack-o'-lantern pumpkins and some other ones. Yeah, you just, I mean, you can kind of tell, like you can almost hear that, like it sounds like a basketball or a volleyball, I guess, to be honest. That is the one mistake that I've seen a few people make. I, oh wait, I didn't even tell you guys, I hosted a pumpkin bong making class on Tuesday and then I'm hosting another one on Friday the 21st and I knew, I brought an extra pumpkin because I knew someone was gonna make this mistake, which like I made it one time too. I tried to get like a fun, bumpy pumpkin to carve and make into a pumpkin bong, but it was way too thick. Like I stabbed it with a steak knife and like it was not going through enough for me to actually be able to cut a hole. So there was one person who brought like a pie pumpkin and I gave him the extra one and it all worked out great and I had a functional pumpkin bong. So again, the carving tool is the pumpkin and then you're also going to need a down stem and a bowl piece. You can, I guess, just put a bowl piece directly into the pumpkin and that would work just as well, but the down stem, if you wanna add like water filtration and put water into your pumpkin, of course this is more so gonna be what you want. And then that's it. Pumpkin, down stem, bowl piece, and carving tools. 
and your weed. And that's literally it. Aria's still under here, isn't she? Yes, she is. So there's of course many different ways to make a pumpkin bong. You can do it where like you carve the hole in the top and like gut it, take all the seeds out. I mean, especially if you want to save your seeds and roast them, like you're definitely going to want to do that. But I found myself having more success when I don't carve and gut it and I just do one hole for the down stem and one hole for the mouthpiece and then I just leave everything in there. I think when you add the extra hole at the top and having to like take it off and put it back on, you'll sometimes get a few issues with the seal and air will kind of sneak through and prevent you from getting a good hit from your actual bowl piece. If you run into that problem, if you did take the top off, what you do is you dampen a paper towel, so like wet the paper towel or rant completely out, and then you're going to take the top off, put the paper towel down, and then put the top over it. And that like damp paper towel is gonna help seal any little gaps that you may have. I think that's all my little like tips and tricks before we actually start carving this. I guess uh, one more little thing you wanna make sure you figure out where your holes are going to be first beforehand, that's kind of obvious. So you want your mouthpiece to kind of be on the upper half of your pumpkin. So I also try to look at like where the prettiest part of the pumpkin is and have that be towards the front, like where your bowl is gonna be. So this is definitely the most beautiful part of the pumpkin. So I'm probably gonna put my mouthpiece right here and my bowl piece will be right here. When you are carving your bowl piece, you kind of want to try to go in at an angle if you can, because you don't want your bowl going, or your downstem going straight in. It'll be harder to get your water filtration, and then it'll be easier for your weed to fall out of your bowl piece. Something that works sometimes when you're trying to figure out where you want your downstem to be. So for one, see how long it is, and then it's going to be a little bit angled. So probably about halfway through will be fine. Probably about like here-ish. And I will sometimes take the top, like the top of your down stem and like push it into the bong to try and make a little impression. That way I know where I'm going to start cutting the hole. But, so this will be here, this will be like here. So I'm gonna like, just kind of like circle it. I don't know if you can see, oh, you can totally see that. Now it's got a little indentation there. And that's my guide. Now remember you can always make your carved hole bigger, you cannot make it smaller. I honestly recommend making it um, the inside kind of ring, if that makes sense. See how like that's kind of thick. You're gonna wanna go on the inside because you almost want your hole to be a little bit smaller than it needs to be. And then I will like put the down stem in just like this more clear part. And then once it gets to the sandblasted part, it gets a little wider. And then I'll just literally like <laughs> shove it in. And then there is no little air gaps or anything like that. And your airflow is gonna be really good. So let's just get right into this. So I'm gonna try to go in at an angle from both the top and the bottom. Oh my God, this is carving too easily. It smells like a pumpkin. I think we're good. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there's definitely still a lot of like the, <laughs> the meat of the pumpkin, if you will, right at the bottom. So that's gonna prevent the down stem from going in at more of an angle. So I'm not going to make the hole bigger, but I am on the inside going to try and get some of that extra uh, like pumpkin just kind of shades down a little bit that way I can do this oh yeah we're going right into pumpkin guts I can feel it oh I would suggest doing that like not putting it all the way in because it's a little hard to get it out when you do that until you take it out <laughs> and declog it because there will be some some pumpkin guts and even seeds that will get stuck in your down stem. So, wow, that's at a really good angle, actually. And now we're gonna do our mouthpiece. <laughs> so at our pumpkin bong event, I was helping someone uh, just carve their pumpkin bong and make it successful. And I was, I think, testing out, oops, I just stabbed it over there. I think I was testing out the water level and <laughs> I inhaled through the mouthpiece and sucked up a pumpkin seed. So same with this one, I'm gonna try to shave down some of that pumpkin meat <laughs> it's so gross calling it that but like it kind of is you know like the meat of the the vegetable I'm just trying to push stuff away from the mouthpiece this pumpkin looks like it's got lots of filling sometimes you'll like carve one and there's barely anything in it but i feel like this one's got some stuff going on let's go put some water in it 
Now it's probably just because I both left it on the vine for a while and I've had it in my house for a while, but I feel like there's a lot of just stuff on the inside of this pumpkin, both like seeds and the guts and all of that, where there's not great airflow, you can kind of hear it. Like I tried to put water in there, but it would just be like overflowed, but not making the like chugging noise that it should with the water filtration. But I think I'm gonna like, Put that down the down stem. Does that reach the end of it? I don't even know. I'm trying to like maybe push some stuff that's towards the end of it. That's one of the perks to taking the top of the pumpkin off is that you're able to really make sure it's clean in there and get good water filtration. I'm gonna pull the down stem out just to check. I had a feeling. <laughs> I had a feeling. So we'll push that out and then maybe that'll help. We might be able to get a little more water in there even. Oh my god, I forgot she was there again. Oh, it's a workout for my lungs. Oh, another little tip. Be careful with tilting it forward, especially if your bowl piece is really low to the bottom. I have definitely done that in pouring water on myself. I feel like that sounds a little bit better. Let me put a little more water in. I think I'm also just going to do a little stabbing in here just to like move things around. Because I feel like, I don't know, there's some weird stuff going on in here. That just did a lot. Okay, a little more water. Tiny bit more. That's crazy. I can see the light going in from that hole. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay, I think I have pumpkin in my hair. I just felt something. I'm just gonna take the bowl piece from this and put it right into that because there's still like half a bowl in there. Oh, and it's fun to use the little mushroom bowl with the pumpkin. <laughs> Cheers. Let me know if you're smoking along and especially if it's a pumpkin bong. Cheers. Another successful pumpkin bong. I was trying to remember when my first ever pumpkin bong was. I know for a fact that I made one in 2013. I might have made one in 2012, but I will just say 2013 because I know for a fact that I made one in 2013. So I think this would be my 10th year of making them, right? Yeah. Because next year will be the 11th, because I get started on the 3, so the 10th would end on the 2. Wow, a decade of pumpkin bongs. I'm going to have to see if I can find pictures or at least screenshots from videos over the year. I don't think I'll have one from 2013. I remember there being a video on my old Snapchat, but I, I don't think I have that anymore. Definitely have, I, I'm almost positive I have one from every year on my YouTube channel so I can at least grab stuff starting in 2014 and do little screenshots. Aria, what are you doing? I would love to know if you have made a pumpkin bong before. I did a poll for this on my Instagram story and I think it was about like 20% had said yes that they made one, maybe even a little bit less to be honest. But this is your sign to make a pumpkin bong with your, your stoner friends, oh god. <laughs> You hear the cat claws on the floor. I feel like I always hit it like this. Because, like, it's kind of hard, like, holding a pumpkin, especially if it's much bigger than this, and then, like, lighting it at the same time. And then once you add water to it, it gets even heavier. So being able to just, like, rest it on my knee, and it's, like, perfect. <laughs> Cheers. I felt something touch my lip. <laughs> now Sansa's under here. You see her little butt? Cheers. I need some water after that one. I am now stoned. <laughs> I'm probably just going to take another hit or two from the bong and then finish off this lovely video. I am not sure when this is going live, but I have a video on my Sasha Lee YouTube channel going live either tomorrow, which is a Sunday, or Monday. It'll definitely be live by the time you see this, for sure.
And why is that so distracting for me? I love that I have been uploading just like a little bit more frequently on this channel just with some fun stuff going on. What was it? A vlog, a product review I did, a little vlog to Boston and getting the judges kit. I was thinking of doing an unedited sesh soon, so um, let me know where I should film that. I mean, I feel like maybe I should do it on the deck because I hate to say it, but it's getting cold and daylight savings is in like two weeks. I want, no, maybe three weeks. I think it might be three weeks, but still, that's pretty sad to think about. So I should take advantage of my deck and having my gazebo roof on because we're going to be taking the roof down soon. Usually by early November we take it down. All right. Oh, I wanted to film a uh, story as well. Oh my god, I keep forgetting that, like, this is a pumpkin that I grew. Brendan and I grew it, to be honest. Honestly, he did most of the watering whenever we went over there. He would do watering, and I would film stuff, and do, like, pruning and harvesting. <laughs> and he would water it, like, 95% of the time. Oh, if you want to see just, like, my gardening vlogs from this year, I actually had a little plot of land at Brendan's parents' house in Massachusetts. So I had just, like, a small little, like, flower garden here in Rhode Island. And then I had a vegetable garden in Massachusetts. And I have quite a few vlogs and harvests over on the Sasha Lee channel. And I learned a lot like this was probably what my third maybe fourth year growing vegetables and this was just like a totally different experience than growing stuff in pots of course and I'm very very excited to do it next year because there's already there's like two main things like for one the cucumbers need a better trellis like those things will go all year if they just have a good trellis so I want to get like an archway sort of thing like and have that at the ends and then they'll just kind of grow up it and it'll be like viney and vibey and I can put like fairy lights around it too Oh, it's gonna look so good and then I need to give the pumpkin vine its own long path because it was just like I I didn't give it enough space to spread out and it was kind of overtaking other plants and just like hindering both the pumpkin and like the banana peppers it was in or like the green beans it was like the banana peppers and the green beans I think that it kind of took over so just giving it its own lane is definitely what we're gonna do. And then I wanna try corn again. We had corn that was like this big. It looked okay otherwise, but it was like that big. And I really wanna get just like actual corn. I think that'll be great. But I feel like you have to grow corn in big quantities for it to really be successful. Who knows? Maybe I could grow some here instead of in the Massachusetts garden. All right, let's take one more hit and then I'm going to finish this off. If you are on Instagram, I post my story pretty much every single day. It is the same as my name on here. It is Silence Tippy. I also have a Twitter that is Silence Tippy. Those are like my big three. YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. All Silence Tippy. All right. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching this video and especially for staying till the end. Cheers. I knew I hit that hard. <coughs> I could feel it immediately. Oh, this is gonna be stale. That wasn't <coughs> super enjoyable. <laughs> you know when like <coughs> the resi taste just like hits the back of your throat and then just stays there? That's what I get sometimes. Like I bet the smoke in that bong rip was yellow, but I just couldn't see it because it was on the pumpkin. Did you, my eyes, I feel like I just felt them shift down another level. Okay, I'm gonna end this video off. Okay, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Stay high. Bye.